Hey everybody, please add your names to the uh, list of attendees on the agenda doc. I just pasted a link to the chat. I am, okay, can you hear me? Yes. So I'm taking the calls on phone. Uh, two things, uh, one last, last time I was on phone as well. When I opened the doc on phone, it, uh, it doesn't let me edit, so I can't add my name. And uh, secondly, uh, uh, I need to get off uh, after 25 minutes. Okay, you're cutting out a little there. Um, can you do me a favor, send me a note um, with your email yep. address? Because you should be able to edit the doc. Everybody has a right access to at least add a comment to the doc. No, it, it, it works from a computer. It doesn't work from my phone. It could be something wrong with my phone. Ah, gotcha. Okay. That, yeah, that I can't help with. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, but I have your attendance listed, so thank you. Yep. Steve, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Just making Thanks. sure I can track you. Thank you, sir. One of these days I'll actually start learning people's names by voice, but not today. People can add their names to the attendance. I'd appreciate it. Hey, Mark. Morning, Doug. And hey, Austin. Hey, Doug. How are you? Good. How are you? Good to hear. I'm calling in from a ranch in Northern California because our company's on a retreat right now. You're trying to make us jealous, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly the most beautiful setting for a call I've had in a while. Nice. And David, hello. Hey, Doug, can you enable um, right, right access to the document? Yeah, hold on just a sec. Um, who is that speaking? Uh, Louis Fourier. Okay. Thank you. And David Baldwin, are you on the call? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yep, I got you now. Thank you. Thank you. And Daniel Crook? Yep, I'm here. Good. Oops. Spell your name right. All right, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Mr. Rakowski, are you there? Present. Thank you, sir. Joanne from SAP. Oh, yes, I'm here, Johannes. Okay, okay sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, I mispronounced it. I, I apologize. Thank no, you. no problem. <laughs> I'm, I have to say this every call. I am horrible when it comes to, to pronouncing names, so I apologize to everybody in advance. <laughs> All right. You're on either.
We have a Joe K on the call. Are you there? That's Johannes. Oh, thank you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm not aware which nickname I choose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And then there's someone. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. That someone looks like they're from four one five eight three zero three four four six. Is that an existing person, or is that someone new that we should add to the list? Hi, that's me. I'm I'm representing Kathy. She's on business travel. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. And that you're you're for hard, right? That's me. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. Okay, got it. And you're on. Are you there? Yep. All right. Gotcha. Already well, joining in a minute. Okay, and Sarah, you there? Yes. Excellent. Sorry to be a few minutes late. Nope. And let's see, Rachel, what you took on the screen? Rachel Myers? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, I'm here. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, uh, I'll give you just another 30 seconds or so. Oh, Lee, miss you. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> so used to seeing you there, you just sort of, I just, I, I just assumed. Faded <laughs> sort of into the wallpaper, yeah. I don't uh, think he's really there, it's just a bot. <laughs> he plays a, a video in the background. It's, it's a, a very good bot. It's an animated uh, whiteboard. Just, yeah. All right, yeah, let's see, David Lyle. Are you there, David? All right, I don't hear David yet. And let's see, one more person, then we'll get going. Oh, man, the machine is slow. Uh, who was it? Klaus, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Excellent, thank you. All right, <clears throat> we'll do the roll call thing again later after the end of the call, see if we missed anybody. Sorry, so, David Lyle, I finally found the mute oh, button. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Man, my machine is just acting up. Okay. Um, are there any changes to the agenda people would like to make? I tried to cover what I thought some of the hotter topics. Okay. So let's, let's get going then. Um, first of all, we have no AI, so that's kind of cool. Um, the white paper status. <clears throat> um, well, we do have an AI. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed one. Um, was it? So I did a PR for changes to the governance model at a little offline. I think there's been a lot of discussion on it. I've updated it. And I had an offline discussion with Doug that um, I'm going to try to separate it into individual specific um, PRs. But I would like people to sort of comment on the ideas in it because it's definitely like a work in progress. It was like exploring a bunch of ideas for a governance model that would encourage offline participation. Um, so I think it, it, I think it needs more discussion, um, which we can do offline. And, and so I just wanted to alert everybody that that's in progress and I can add a link to the doc. Excellent. Cool. All right, cool. Um, all right, so white paper status. Um, it is still going under the final review process by the, I'm not sure what the title you'll give to these guys, but the, the, the PR type people within CNCF who want to do the final cleanup and, and touch up with the doc itself. Um, last I heard, they may have some minor edits they want to make to it. I haven't actually seen the proposals yet, but obviously uh, people should get a chance to review those before they finalize everything. But it is still in the works, so um, nothing to do there for our group yet. But I just wanted to let you guys be aware of what's going on there. Um, let's see, PRs. Um, well, okay, I, there are, I think there are three PRs that are technically ready to go. Let's look at the first one here, see if my machine behaves properly. So this one, there are more edits that need to be made. However, the reason I decided to add it to the list for discussion right now is because all the edits that I think need to be made are strictly typographical in the sense that um, the PR still references um, open events instead of cloud events, like you can still see here online one, stuff like that. But I think those are really the only edits that people have suggested to be made in there. Um, so what I'm wondering is whether people have any concerns with this PR as it stands today, and maybe we could approve it conditionally on Austin 
uh, swapping out the, the appropriate name and doing the rebase or whether people still need more time? I'll leave that as an open question. <clears throat> well, I just suggested that the roadmap be a separate um, item um, because I think that the, like, that's, I mean, I, I didn't realize that we were meeting weekly, so I missed a bunch of meetings. Um, so I don't really know the um, story behind the roadmap. So Sarah, when you say a separate item, do you mean a separate PR or? I, I meant a separate, yeah, like a separate PR and um, doc. And doc, okay. Right, because then it like it sort of stands by itself, but I, we really, really need like a readme that gives an overview of this thing. Okay, did you add a comment to the uh, PR itself for Austin to, to take a yeah, look at it as a reminder? Okay. I thought I did. Just wanna make sure there's something in there. Oh no, I'm not used to the new GitHub thing, so I didn't submit review. Sorry. Um, okay. New That's GitHub fine. workflow, not that new, but. Um, all right, so I've submitted it. Okay, so let's do this then. Since there are outstanding comments, then let's go ahead and hold off. Um, and it's in there, so that, as a reminder to Austin, take a look at that, and we can try to get this thing pushed through next week. Does that sound fair? I, I almost have them swapped out already, Doug. Excellent. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. Um, uh, actually, was this one ready? Maybe I jumped the gun here. Let's double check. Yeah, I like that the use cases are in a separate doc. I think the same thing, like, you know, like when we have separate things in separate docs, then um, it's easier to manage all the PRs. Yeah. Sarah, okay. what, do you, what do you think the main readme should be? Um, I think it should be about like what we're, like what is this and what's it for? And maybe and, it could also, should it also include a table of contents to get to all the other docs? Maybe, yeah, those that, maybe, yeah, those that are cloud event specific. Um, and there's a whole another set of docs about the working group itself. It may also want to include just a, and I think Doug may have said this before, but the briefest of blurbs about what it's not, you know, if, to the extent that that helps clarify. And I think, you know, like ideally, and we may not be like quite there yet, but maybe somebody feels like they could draft them. Like, what are we looking for? What kind of engagement are we looking for? right now because I think we're going like I'm hoping we'll get to a place relatively soon where we're looking for people to implement the spec but we're not quite there yet and that should be clear okay can I recommend that I mean, these are all great comments can I recommend that people put comments into the PR itself as a sort of a, a, a nagging reminder to Austin try to address those that way we don't lose track of them or open issues well this is just a PR right now so Oh, I prefer comments on the PR itself. That way Austin can figure out how he wants to address them inside the PR. And then, if, then obviously if they're not addressed, then yes, open up separate issues after the PR gets merged or rejected one of the two. Oh, it sounds like there's some future topics though. Those are just the issues. They're not rec recollecting the current content. That is true. Yeah, obviously, yes. If you have other things you'd like to see changed, open up issues if they're outside this PR. Okay. I think those are all uh, great suggestions, by the way. Yep. I agree with all of them. Okay, um, so Austin, on the next PR, which I believe is number eight, I know there was at least one comment that's relatively new by Mark, uh, and there are a couple of asking comments, mainly typographical type things. Um, are there other things in here that we need to discuss, or is it just a matter of addressing the comments? So, so Doug, one, one comment, uh, it's your own. I'll try and add it to the readme just before we, we move to the next one on mm -hmm. the uh, overview. Again, I made this comment before, just the logistic of editing. Uh, I think we also want to address the API, not just the messaging. I don't think it's clear from this uh, description that eventually as a serverless working, we want to make sure that the serverless consumption model of the event is sort of uh, standardized, uniform, whatever we want to call it. So Yaron, would that fall into the definition, I'm sorry, into the scope of this specification, which is about the event format, or is that a future work item for us to tackle? Why, why do we need separate, you know, because the format eventually need to be consumed. If you're creating a format and everyone consumes it in a different way, uh, that sort of uh, misses the point. I don't think we really uh, need more event structures, you know, more pub sub uh, engines, there are enough of them. 
think what we really want is a definition of how a message looks within a pop sub uh, you know, tunnel or whatever, and how you consume it. Okay, I would recommend then that you add a comment to the PR as a reminder to Austin to try to to address that in there. So, so Doug, I mean, I mean, the, the spirit of GitHub is to, you know to keep P G PR small. I mean, we should have PR comments be reflecting the if we closing the current content issues. If there are future things or things that are additive or new, we should get this PR approved through and, and approved, and then future topics, future suggestions, or augmentations should be addressed as issues. That's the spirit of pull requests. Get them, you, can't, you shouldn't keep them open ad agnosium and have scope creep. That's, that's my concern. I definitely don't want scope creep, that's true. I don't want yeah. PR to leave forever, ever. I think I, I, um, I added a note about, like, I, I mean, I agree with this, like in terms of the roadmap, um, like, I think that my understanding is that is the same as whoever was just speaking that like, the format is not sufficient. And I don't know, I, I think it would be nice to keep the format as its own spec and have a different spec or guidance or whatever we decide about how one transports that format in such a way that there can be interrupt between two systems. Yeah, but that's, uh, by the way, Sarah, it's Yaron from Iglesia. Hi. I think the point is that, uh, let's assume we want to implement some of that, okay? Just like you know, we've we've seen open messaging and others. So you're going to implement the spec, and what would be the implementation? You know, a JSON structure, a you know, a go uh, the, you know a message uh, format. It's probably when you're saying we're we're going to implement it, you're going to implement a library that consumes a message and generates a message, and that essentially gets you to an API. I don't think that we can di uh, disconnect the two. So Austin, um, I'd like to put the burden on you, if I may. Since this is your PR, I'd like you to decide the scope of the changes you'd like to see within this PR versus asking people to do follow-on PRs and issues to add text. Is that okay? Sure, yes. And a lot of these comments are important. Um, if they could be tracked as issues, I think that would be super helpful so that yep. they don't get lost. Right, so if, if, someone, if someone makes a comment on your PR that says, hey, it'd be great to add this, and you think that's better served as a separate issue, then please just they open up in a separate issue. I have no problem with that kind of decision. Great, will do. Okay, is that okay with everybody? Yeah, I'm making a, a um, or just a note, Austin, to suggest that people open issues if he feels they're outside of the scope of the PR. Yeah. Because as, as Matt was saying, we do need to make forward progress um, and we don't want to keep things open forever because we could we wordsmith things to death. We're very good at that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's wordsmithing. It's actual scope. Like it's actually that people disagree with the, the roadmap or feel that there needs to be more scope in the roadmap and then committing to a roadmap that doesn't seem to accomplish our goals is like not, everybody isn't aligned with However, having a starting document that we edit, you know, is also a good process, right? So I think that um, that's where we're at. And, um, and I like the idea of there are open issues, right, that indicate that there are open issues, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely my, the spirit of what Maya was suggesting. So thanks for staying it so brilliantly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we done with this one? I just want to say one closing comment. Uh, the roadmap was just a first pass, um, just to get something down. And uh, I look forward to other people's ideas and suggestions as to uh, what should be in there. So um, I prefer issues where it's kind of written out clearly and concisely. Um, and I, yeah, I, I look forward to those. Thanks, Austin. Yep. All right. Moving on then, this, this issue, number eight. Um, Austin, as I said, I think there are a couple of open comments on this one. Are there things you want to discuss here or is it just a matter of you addressing the comments and people looking it over? I just submitted some changes I thought last night to address all the comments. Uh, maybe there were a few that I felt uh, needed to be discussed. I can't remember. Can we I look know. through them real quick? Yeah. So let me go back to the doc. Hold on a second. Gosh, my machine is slow. Come on. So basically, the, in the spec itself, it looks like you made some spaces there, which is fine. You basically ripped out the, um, the use case section and put it into a separate doc. 
And then, okay. let's see. Where'd Mark's comment go? Oh, wait, did I turn off that little checkbox? Hold on. There it is. <coughs> yeah, so open eventing changed. But, uh, so there's this comment. Mm. Normalizing events across services and platforms, facilitating integration across service platforms. Looks like two aspects of the same use case. Um, <clears throat> highly likely. Let me let me think about that further uh, offline and respond. Okay. To that comment. Okay. It sounds like between that one, potentially this one. That might just be a wording change. But then Mark had a different one. Where was it? Do, 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 do. And then there are a couple comments down here. It sounds like there may be some edits you want to make. So this one may not be quite ready to merge right now. Is that fair? Correct. Yes. Okay. So let's take this one offline then. And then hopefully at next week's call, we could try to nail this one down. Yep. Sounds okay. good. Also, I want to say I'm uh, open to contributions on the use cases. I think there's a lot of, a lot of people um, in this effort already with a lot of experience. And if you have suggestions, uh, maybe you could just open an issue for it now and propose a, propose a use case. That would be super helpful. Yep. Hey, hey, Austin, where was that? Where'd you want that? In the issues. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah, I, I, I think, again, we need, to, we need to think about pushing this content out as interim to make it easier to add additional uh, PRs. Yep. yep. All right. Any other comments on PR number eight? All right, moving forward, my screen will move. Okay, uh, there's this one that I opened up, number 15, which tries to make a first pass at adding some normative language around um, the properties themselves, you know, which ones are optional, which ones are required. Um, I don't think I changed the semantics of anything. I did try to remove some extra text that I thought was just sort of uh, commentary, for lack of a better phrase. I didn't think that was necessarily appropriate for, for a specification. I'm not going to necessarily ask for people to vote on this here because I haven't had any comments on this. So I assume that means people haven't have not had a chance I, to do it. So I did comment. There was one place where the I believe the semantics are changed, but I have to give it another careful read to be able to articulate that. Um, oh, so I, I again just sort of recommended it being in two OPRs. Okay, I just can't see your comment. I suggested. Did you actually I, hit the button? Yeah, it's, it's um, um, just it's on, on the corner. PR as a whole. Oh, maybe that's why I'm not seeing it. Okay. Well, anyway, it doesn't sound like we're ready to actually merge this today. I'll take a look at um, at your comments. But I, oh, with only um, Chad giving it one LG10 just 26 minutes ago, I feel a little uncomfortable merging this right now. So just as a reminder, please, everybody go look at this. I, like I said, I tried my best not to change any semantics. Um, but if I got it wrong, obviously, jump, you know, Point it out to me, and I'll try to get it fixed. Intent yeah, I'll make sure that, somebody, that um, myself and somebody else on my team gives it a careful review because I do just to double check the. I do think there was a semantic change there, and yep. I'm not sure that the original spec was super clear about the meaning of a couple of things. Yep. So please take a look at that. I think um, once this one is in, that gives us a nice baseline to go forward, and then we <clears throat> we should be able to do you know much more smaller and focused PRs going forward to do individual changes. But this at least gives us a hopefully a baseline to work with. Yeah, I think it's a great move. Okay. Any comments on this one? Hopefully not, since we're not going to merge it right now. All right. I believe that's it in terms of PRs that might be ready. Um, so one thing I want to talk about next were uh, areas of the spec that we thought it needed work or that we need to take action on. And the list that I put here were just things that popped into my head just to sort of get the conversation going. Um, in particular, the things that stood out to me are... Um, Inside the spec right now, we have several places where there are things that are listed as to do's or notes, and they're basically things that need discussions. So I thought, okay, what we should do is remove those from the spec itself and turn each one of those into an issue. Seems like a fairly easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is <clears throat> there's a section called content attribute, attribute backlog. I'm assuming that's just a list of uh, potential attributes that haven't been agreed upon by the people that originally worked on the spec. So what we should do is open up an issue for each one of those, just 
to decide whether we want to include them as, a, as an approved property or not. So just open up issues for those, and then we can remove those. Or, I'm sorry, uh, leave them in the spec in that section for right now, but then open up issues for each one that says either remove it or make it a full-fledged property that we agreed to. And then once all those issues are resolved, that entire section will go away because there won't be a backlog anymore. So those are the two sort of action item -y type things that I wanted to mention first. Uh, any comments about those disagreements that seem reasonable at the starting point? We put the backlog in the Google Doc because we were working out of Google Docs. Now that we've moved to GitHub, I think it makes sense to maybe remove that backlog section from the specification itself and possibly put that uh, all in issues. Okay. And shorten the document, make it an easier read, um, and then just put those in a format that is uh, where an easy uh, debate can take place. I'm okay with that too. Um, I like that idea. Um, and would anybody like to take the action item to remove that section and then open up issues for the backlog of PRs? Don't everybody jump up at once. Yeah, this is Louie, I'll do that. Louie, thank you. Excellent. All right. Um, what about converting all the notes and to-dos into issues? Anybody want to jump up and take that one? Somebody who hasn't submitted a PR yet? Who is that? Well, I was going to say I can do that, but I submitted a PR already. <laughs> you, can, you can do more than one PR, that's fine. <laughs> I was just suggesting that maybe somebody wants to get involved in the PR writing. I'm happy, I'm happy to write them up as issues. And that's Rachel, correct? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, the other thing that I thought might be worthy of doing in terms of work that's needed on the spec is to pull the current set of, um, or poke on the current set of providers out there um, to make sure that the, the current set of suggested properties uh, aligns with their view of a good starting point in terms of a core set of properties. Um, so this is basically nothing more than just make sure the, the, the big guys out there are looking at this stuff and paying attention to it and, and they're okay with it. I don't think it's necessarily a formal thing other than all of us go back to our respective companies or partners that we work with to get them to look at the, the, the spec and make sure that the, the current set of properties matches what they want and they don't want more or, or we're gone too far. That was the only list I could come up with so far. I'm, I'd like to sort of open up the floor now to see if other people have other ideas for major areas of the spec that they think need work. Well, I think that... Um, Go ahead, Sarah. One of the things, I'm not quite sure whether there's something that we can pull, maybe Austin has some ideas, but like, I think that there's, there's a huge amount of context about how events are being used in the wild within the different cloud providers and um, what ex why exactly all these decisions have been made. And so um, I don't, I don't, I, I can't think, I'm sure there is something like out there in the world that is like, this is a picture of how all these things work together or, or what is the context for these particular type of events. And so um, I, I, I think that's, that's the thing that's missing. Cause like, I'd like to see people who, in addition to the major cloud providers, you know, Google being one of them, you know, and my team like that, that like participated in this, this initial thing and have implementations, right? That we'd like to, um, you know, in serverless.com, like we have these things that like are, um, they're, they're so logically the same that serverless.com could make an implementation that makes them all seem the same. Um, but maybe there are other players like um, that are not yet involved that have an analogous thing or consume them. Like I'd like to see other like like tool makers or like some outreach to um, you know and Rachel and I were brainstorming people who are writing applications based on events so that this is also vetted by people who are consuming them in a different way. Well, well this goes back to the use cases. I mean, first of you know, first of all, right. once you scope down, it's about the it's always about the data. It's about the event producers. What I'm hearing, you have to identify a set of event producers to go after in different domains or spaces, whether it be IOT or whatever, who is ever producing events today, you have to ask them why they've made decisions to produce the events the way they have. And what are they, and see if, 
And you also have to see if they're receptive to alignment with the standard. Hey, uh, yeah. Sarah, this is uh, David Baldwin with, with Splunk. Uh, I, actually, I, I do have a, a checkpoint to go back and take this with our architecture group as well to get some feedback. Um, so we can also, if you want to call it, compare against other, mechanism, other mechanisms we've seen. Uh, but we probably wouldn't see that until next week, though, or have any feedback on that until next week. Yeah, I mean, I think this is all for, like, us to, you know, what are the next actions? Well, well I think it greatly influences, like, the, how we, how we do routing and it's, it's going to come down to event types. Different event types will carry different types of data and some will have protocol requirements. So I think those are, those are the, the things that we need to get at a higher level of what type of events we're dealing for which domains. So I want to just go back for a second, Sarah, to make sure I understood what you were saying. Are you saying that inside the spec itself, we need to include something like an architecture diagram or and something that kind of explains how it all fits together into a bigger picture? I wouldn't say inside the spec. But like what I'd like to do is like I know people who are um, who are sort of part of this ecosystem in some way, right? They are consuming events, they're writing tools around events, they're, they have application architectures that completely depend on events. And like, and so I'd like to be able to point them to this. However, for most, for many people, the spec stand alone is not sufficient for them to understand what we're trying, you know, like, how does this fit into the whole puzzle? And part of it is it's not done per our prior conversation. And part of it is like, um, just like, well, what, like, like, so for example, um, within Google, we have a lot of different things that some people call events. Um, and um, there's a lot of discussion in, you know, kind of this, uh, the subset of the working group that you know was chat, chat that um, sort of Austin convened and you know different things that it, in our events implementation with Google Cloud Functions we've sort of separated into events and messaging, right? And that's conveyed in what's kind of now the README, right? And it's moving out of the spec, which I think is a good idea. But it's that context of like in overall events in the world like what part of events are we paying attention to? Um, which would make it easier to put things in context than invite people into um, make comments on the spec. So it so, sounds like you're looking for sort of a secondary document whether it's a white paper or something like that, just something to help provide context for this. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so that the previous document I wrote, again, it's your own for the CNEM and there was another one. Uh, I did cover sort of the ecosystem, the different sort of pub sub mechanism protocols and did differentiate just like Sarah between uh, message and events. Again, because for some cloud provider events, there may not be a message or the message will be cloud provider internal thing that you don't even care about the message structure. Uh, yeah. So you can take some, some information from my previous doc or uh, reorganize it to fit what Sarah, you know, Sarah, maybe we can work on that together. I don't know if you've seen that document. No, I'd love to um, see it. Yeah, so feel free to hit me up on Slack or um, Adam, if you have a link in here, if it's public. Um, sure, I'll send you, there were a few documents that are separate and we can try and combine it. Well, also diagrams of use cases, various use cases, and which represent different aspects of that. Okay, so is it okay if I assign you an action item to open up an issue so we can track this and make sure we assign it to the right milestone or and have yeah, a discussion on that? Yeah, definitely. And um, Siram, if you would put your GitHub in here, I'll tag you in it. If I've got your name right. Are you talking about Yuran? Yuran, yeah. Oh, Yuran. Yuran from Iguazio? Yes. Great. Now I've got your name right. There we go. Got it. Okay. Anything else people think we need to address inside the spec itself or th areas that need work? There's still a naming conversation. I think we should, we should have at some point for the proper. Then Austin, you cut out there a you little. You sat down and drafted. The... Oop, can you hear me okay at the moment? You, you seem to be cutting out a bit. You may want to start over. <laughs> sure. Uh, I think there's still a naming conversation or a, a naming pass we should do on some of the properties that are within the specification. Um, when we drafted those, uh, those properties, we agreed to not focus on the name, um, just focus on, on their meaning. So I think if someone wants to take a shot at 
seeing if there's opportunities to name those properties um, in a better way. That would be helpful. Uh, I've been thinking about that a little bit. I'd be open to be taking a pass at this um, unless any, unless someone else wants to try. Yeah. And also, I don't know if, if people have, um, I haven't given a lot of thought to um, rationale for naming, but like Austin, if, if, or the other people who've been involved in like sort of standard stuff, like if there's any rationale for why we're naming things a certain way, would love to settle on that first. Like, oh, we're going to take capitalization from this, you know, way of doing things, or we want to be consistent with this kind of a thing. Like, you know, like sort of agreeing on some kind of philosophy and then we can wordsmith it would be awesome if there, if you have any suggestions, anybody. Well, my, well, my first suggestion would be, would be brevity. So the data itself is going to take up so much space. So the, 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 the context is given by the event, event type and from the spec that um, leave the key names or identifiers as short as possible. That's my suggestion. Uh, it's going to be full of data. Our goal is to get to a million, you know, to, the, 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 yep, I, a, I agree with the, all, a million events per I'm second. Sorry, Matt, I, my second. connection is cutting out, so I thought you stopped talking. So I'm saying, see, the goal is to get to a million connect, million events per second, and to do that, you need to reduce the wire format of, of the event content itself. Go ahead, Austin. Austin, did we lose you? Hold on. Austin, can you unmute? Uh oh. Okay, I, I heard Austin volunteer to take a, an initial pass at this. Um, I assume if someone else is also interested, you'll reach out to Austin to work on that. Um, <clears throat> if Austin doesn't do it, I will open up an issue so we can assign this in terms of priorities and workload and stuff and assign it to the right milestone and stuff like that just so we could track it. Uh, any other things people on the spec people think we need to, um, to deal with? Going once. I think we have a fairly good list so far. All right, not hearing any. I have a whole bunch of AIs to do things. That's all good. Um, okay, the next thing I thought might be good to talk about is how we're sort of a more of a process type question in terms of how we're going to decide uh, what we're going to do for each release. Because I've been kind of assuming, and this is actually up for debate, is that we'd have at least three different releases, sort of an alpha, beta, and then a version one. So let me sort of start off with that as a baseline question. Um, do we need to have, a, have more uh, releases in there other than those three? Or do people want to say, no, we're just going to keep sort of working and then every now and then we'll say, oh, we're going to cut a version 1.2 and then a 1.2.5 or something, you know, and just sort of play it by ear? Or do we want to say, no, let's, let's have some concrete releases, alpha, beta type thing, and that way we can, we can assign issues to those milestones. You know, how do people... How do, how do people like to move forward on this in terms of laying out our target dates for things? I was just assuming we would have like versions, right? Like if we change, like anytime we change the semantic meaning of something or the name of something, or, or maybe we would say that we're going to be, like there's gonna be some versioning and then and and when we hit some like, you know, 0.9 or 0.8 or 0.7 or whatever it is that we say, oh, now we think it is complete enough that we would like people to make implementations of it. And then when we have at least two interoperable implementations, provided we don't have somebody who's like, wait, I'm almost done with mine, that then we would declare it, we would welcome additional implementers. And then it would be 1.0 when something, you know, some milestone of interoperability or something, something. Right. So we, we definitely could do that. You know, just keep increasing the number and eventually at some point we'll, we'll decide when we go to version one um, and not have necessarily formal alpha beta type thing. That that's, works as well. Because I guess I, I've never heard of alpha and beta for a specific, I get, that's typically used for implementations of something rather than the specification, but maybe I... Yeah. Well, we, 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 apart, I mean, apart from the initial version, I, I mean, I think that we should keep it fluid. I mean, you should follow, again, the GitHub spirit and in, encourage people to come back and, and not wait for something uh, that, you know, apart from the first release where we get the base content down, this group should basically on a weekly basis be able to 
anybody can nominate or even apart from the group via, via uh, offline communication saying, I think we've added enough content through a PR or whatever that this PR warrants a new point release. And then, then we do it, you know, based upon a, a page fault system. Right. So just to let you know, so sort of the, my thinking behind uh, the alpha and beta thing, <clears throat> and you're right, that's mo maybe more associated with code than, than specs is, um, because well, I didn't want to get into a, num a numbering thing before. Well, no, I mean, don't, I mean, I'm saying that I think that the, I, won't, I feel everyone here affirming the fact that we want people to write code against it. So, uh, so I think that the, the code follows immediately the spec and the way in the GitHub world it works is, of course, you know, it's, it, people will follow point releases. Um, so it's important for us to realize that we can't hold back people's code in, in debates. We have a, a significant pull request we all agree upon that could warrant a, a point release. No, I understand. And let me just finish what I was saying there, though, Matt. I was assuming that once we get to a version one, that the normal semantic versioning thing will kick in, exactly as you were describing, Sarah, right? You know, mm -hmm. anything, anything change in semantics has to do a major version bump or something like that. Non-breaking non changes can be point releases, you know, adding things without breaking things can be point releases, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but I was trying to figure out the best way to get us to the version one thing. I mean, do we want to do assume that periodically we're going to just do a v0.1 then a v0.2 and just keep increasing the number and eventually we'll say yep now we're at 1.0 um because that's but it, it, to matt's point though i think at some point we do need to decide when we reach this level whether you want to call it beta or you want to call it dot nine that's when we're that's when i feel like we need to be able to tell the broader community we feel like the spec is stable enough that while we were hoping people were implementing up until now now it's really stable enough that, we, that you should feel confident that it, we're not going to completely revamp everything on you and implementation should feel free to implement this without too much fear. That, that was my original thinking behind this process and that's what I thought beta was going to be. And alpha is more like, hey, we think this thing is, an embarrass, is not embarrassing. And we want to share it to the world, right? <laughs> and that's sort of like once you get past this initial stage of adding the RFC keywords, make sure the naming looks like kind of right kind of stuff and you know, get us past the initial hump. That was my original thinking behind those three sort of layers or steps. Well, it's important to have milestones, but I'm, I still say apart from the very first release when, it's, when you can start implementation where there's enough to implement, people just follow the commit hash. So <laughs> um, people, if I write code, I would just say I would reference the commit hash for the document level that I followed, so. All right. Okay. So, um, any other comments on this? Because I'm about to make a suggestion yes, before I do. I want to hear what other people think. Well, I just well, wrote an alternate proposal. So I think I think what you're what you're proposing there is is something that we can look at. Um, well. Hmm. I guess I'm, I'm, try, I'm not, um, I understand the, I think I understand the intent of saying like of declaring something alpha or beta. I just think that that's confusing when like, you know, if a, if somebody has a GA product and choose, we want to incent them like a general availability, like released, um, you know, mature product. And we want to incent them to implement the specification we would want them. Well, I'm saying, I think I think I'm saying the same thing. We, first of all, we don't, we, we have this thing called market freeze. You say we're going to we're wait till this date to freeze. People won't look at it. So as soon as it, people have a chance to beta, it has enough content. We want people implementing because they can pin their commit hash and they can, and they can choose to freeze their implementation based upon that level and upgrade as they see fit. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a little nervous about saying, you know, when you have two in, independent implementations, then, then we go to one. Oh, I'm not sure that's the criteria I would have put out there. I definitely want implementations, don't get me wrong. But I think it's more, we have implementations, we don't have any unresolved issues that are tagged for version one. There's, I think there's several different things that go into play there. And that's, I think, why I was hesitating a little. And yeah. what, my, what my suggestion was going to be was rather than try to necessarily nail it down on this call, yeah. was to suggest that we a group of us go offline and come back with basically a pull request to document the proposed process we go through for, de for defining releases. Does that sound fair? I guess I'm confused about like, um, I mean, I don't want to, maybe I'm getting a text. I I, I, I'm not sure what the release of the spec is because it's unlike, I mean, are, are people envisioning that there would be something that 
is machine readable that a piece of software could be attached to in terms of a commit hash. Um, I mean, like I haven't heard yet that there would be some kind of way to, I don't know, um, make this be something that would be like built into CI or something like it. That's outside of the, what I heard so far. Okay, so well, I think well, Lee was gonna say something. Lee, were you gonna say something in there? Yeah, I don't know how productive this is. In some respects, I don't know how much, um, how much we aren't necessarily um, uh, having a discussion somewhat ahead of where we are, but, but I, I guess I suppose it is it is healthy. I, it's, maybe it's neither here nor there, whether it's alpha, beta, or dot, or we're following a different semantic versioning scheme. Um, yeah, generally people consider, I think alpha and beta certainly um, convey a certain sentiment. Um, people associate 1.0 with um, a similar sentiment about production readiness. I think that it is like, to the extent that anything's a, um, a specific, a standard, I think more and more, at least from my perspective, our industry is generally trended towards um, that being reinforced by implementation. So I think, Sarah, I, you know, I feel like that's a, a good direction. Like, hey, the, the, those that are actually using it, you know, the, the, that's the fact that it's a, an actual standard or a meaningful standard. Um, yeah. getting, getting providers to, or, framework um, providers to um, have this implemented prior to a 1.0. Um, maybe with the amount of momentum behind it, we won't have that much uh, of a challenge. Uh, but I can see that being a challenge, like get them, getting them to invest to the point that they would do it prior to understanding that it's, it's uh, unstable in terms of its spec. Yeah, and just so that people understand sort of my reason behind bringing this up now was a couple of reasons. One is, as we start asking people to open up issues, I feel like we're going to need to have some sort of uh, scheduling of issues or, or listing out priority of issues, right? When, which ones do we think are critical? Which ones are, can be deferred? And a lot of the way people do that is they say, okay, they assign issues to particular milestones. And so I thought it'd be useful to have sort of a, a roadmap of what the milestones are. And we could say this issue should be assigned for a 0.9 versus this one needs to be done immediately for 0.1, right? And so we can sort of weigh the priorities there. I thought that might be useful to help order things. That was one reason behind it. But the other one is, I think it slightly touches on what you were saying there, Lee, which is we're looking for people to implement this stuff. But in my experience, there's a lot of companies that will not touch a specification until it reaches a certain level of maturity. And we need to decide how we're going to indicate that 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 bar right whether it's called beta or some other name or some version number we need to decide what that level is so we feel confident telling people that yes now it's it's ready for you to implement if you haven't done so already so that was the, that was the reason behind my pushing for this sooner rather than later just to get the discussion going well i think we brought up an interesting point i think that it and this goes back to what I was saying about depending on when we write code, we are dependent on our commit hash of a dependent library. But those libraries change under us all the time. I think the scope of this group is to include um, tooling um, around it, even even as, as soon as possible from what Austin was saying uh, at some previous meeting. So maybe the signal is, is when that code is actually, when our group feels that we have uh, enough content in the spec to start creating tooling around, we can invite people to use that tooling. I think that's the, the key, key indicator when we start working towards for, more formalization. Until, but until we reach that point, you know, the question is, you know, what, what, it goes back to scope. What should be the scope for version one that would match milestone one? And I think we only have a milestone one and everything is just future milestone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That may, maybe I can add another thing. If we're, if we're looking at open messaging, just as an example, you open the GitHub, you'll see, uh, reference APIs for Go, PHP, Python, you know, Java, CPP, et cetera. Okay. I think we should have the same. We should have part of the repo API examples and some frameworks. You know, we, we're willing on our platform to just have a, a branch of, of Nucleo, for example, that implements that, even if it's not really the production stuff. It's just something that uh, where someone can experiment with, uh, with those APIs. I don't think we want to keep it as a document. I think we want to move just like open messaging did and start at least defining uh, implementations. You know, just think about the, li the Linux way. You're not waiting until you have a full GA standard for people to implement. You're starting with something, you have a strawman proposal and, and you're, you know, converging on that over time. So, I mean, taking a step back, it goes back to identify use cases we agree to address in milestone one 
that determines the scope for milestone one, then everything else is future milestone. Yeah, well, actually, that's that's very useful, Matt. I agree. So, unfortunately, I also dropped from the call. So, Sarah, since I think you're the one taking notes, and again, thank you for taking notes. Hey, um, hey Doug, I'm, I'm here actually. Oh, yeah. I'm dialing in via phone. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. So I, I I tuned in halfway through this uh, through this topic. It sounds like there's a a few things being discussed at once. That is like how we do versioning, and what the scope is uh, of this of this initial version that we're putting out. Uh, keep in mind that. The specification right now actually has a property in there that indicates what version of the spec that you're using, um, which should hopefully mitigate uh, a lot of issues. And I think that should that should be one of the first priorities for us is just to focus on that and make sure that that's easy for people to reference and use so that they could work with the spec if it changes in the in the near future. Um, as far as versioning goes, I'm a I'm a fan of just using simple versioning and not using words like alpha or beta just because I, I think that it will it will probably steer people away uh, when we actually need to build momentum right now and I think that's that's still one of the most important things and furthermore I think that anything that's version zero whatever it's kind of implicit that it is uh, a beta or kind of a new a new effort um, so anyway those are, those are my thoughts on versioning uh, I agree with a lot that uh, Matt said. I think we need to, you know, continue to talk about the scope of this effort. Uh, again, there is a scope that's drafted up in the specification. Um, I think just settling on what that scope is should be one of the top priorities uh, for this group. Um, if people think that this that there should be more uh, or something else in the scope, we should we should chat about it right away. All right. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So um, I think we've sort of exhausted the time frame on, or time on this one. Other than I think the next steps here would be maybe some, some of us go offline. Uh, point that I mentioned, you didn't refer to that, that uh, essentially having uh, also the API reference as part of the repository that correlates with whatever we're writing. Yes, if we do an API reference, I agree, they need to be correlated, yes. Yeah, but uh, having a, an actual API, just like open messaging has under the same repo of examples for each uh, individual language, different people can own different languages. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So what I'd like to do is suggest that we don't spend more time talking about this one. I think there have been a lot of great ideas mentioned and we'll take, uh, some of us will take this one offline and if there's a PR that can come out of here that maybe defines our release process or something like that, We'll, we'll, we'll submit a PR with giving people something concrete to, to look at and review. But this has been good just for gathering ideas of what people are thinking in the space. And that was really the main point of it. All right. Uh, the next topic is reference implementation. I think people have talked about or danced around this a little bit already. Um, obviously, we're hoping that people actually implement this for real in their products. Um, but is there... Is, the, is a reference implementation, meaning sort of a shared open source thing around this, uh, first of all, does it even make sense? And two, is there interest in doing that? So let me yeah. leave. We, <laughs> Sarah, we, looks have, like uh, this. we have an interest to, to help in that and, and throw some reference implementation. Okay. So that's, oh, wait a minute. Seems like more than one person's typing. I can't tell. <laughs> Okay, so yes, there, there is a push for an implement, reference implementation. Okay, um, so when we talk about reference implementation, are we talking about, well, help me understand. So Lee, since you said yes, or I think it was you that said yes. Uh, yeah, right. No, no, you just said a conformance tool, sorry. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe back to that other sentiment that I was conveying before. Like, I think that um, reference implementations um, make the, spec more easily understood and potentially palatable by others that may use that as a boilerplate for their own implementations. I think it, it bolsters the project and, and makes adoption of it easier. Um, and the same kind of, and then for the conformance tool, it, it also helps in terms of those that are implementing, but it also can be used to, um, as a point of validation or to the extent that anyone, anyone ever put the uh, cloud events logo next to their product that, that they would maybe need to pass that conformance test. And so there's probably a whole nother set of concerns within there. But. Yeah, conformance tool, I think that's that's a good one. I like that. Yeah, who's uh, in charge hey, of Doug. Kubernetes um, conformance test? I just, to build on their experience, maybe how they've gone through this. I know it's more complex, but. Yeah, uh, I'm part of that working group. So 
I can help answering questions around that if we have any. Hey, they, Doug, my, my company has a, has a few things that we'd like to contribute for reference implementations. Um, I think that there's uh, a few things we could, we could make that would, be, that would help people use this right away. Um, a few tools, uh, for example, some type of middleware that you could put in your AWS Lambda functions to convert AWS events to the specification uh, before it actually uh, enters your function. Um, I think we could build a simple libraries and stuff to support that. Um, I think that would be a huge use case. We'd love to contribute that to the cloud events uh, repository. Um, also, we're looking at it, some type of story with Kafka as well. I think that would be um, very useful and add a lot of legitimacy to this effort. And then, of course, we have our own uh, event gateway project, which we've been working on for a long time, um, which is going to fully embrace the specification. Okay, so Austin, would you be okay if I assign you an action item to open up an issue to start gathering thoughts around the scope and what, in re and what a reference implementation would look like? Yep, yep, okay, we, cool. got it. we have several ideas. Excellent, and Lee, is it okay if I tag you to, with an AI to open, up, to open up an issue around what a conformance, conformance. tool might look like? Sounds good. Okay, so hold on a sec. So that's, I've written it up under the conformance tool thing. Oh, excellent, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for facilitating so well. Uh, oh, we're almost out of time. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning. Um, okay, so, um, I, okay, I don't want to get, in, this is a little bit of talking about process a little again, um, but I just want to start the discussion around, at some point it seems like it'd be useful to make sure that as we start adding new features to the specification, there may be some bar other than we think it's a good idea before something gets in, for example, other specs, a lot of times what they'll do is say nothing, no new feature goes into the spec until there are at least, say, two implementations that implement it. So we can see how it looks, people can play with it, they can see it in action, and actually see that it's real, and it's not just some pie in the sky thing that people are thinking of. Um, I'm not sure we necessarily have to decide anything right now because the spec is so immature, but I would like people to start thinking about whether we want to introduce that bar into our process at some point, because I do think, as a lot of people have said in this call, code talks these days, not just paper specs. And so I think we should try to get to the point where we have code behind this at some point to justify what we're doing for each, each step of the way. So let me just stop there. I thought the bar oh. is that it's within the agreed upon scope. Yeah, that's, that's, that should be the bar. I mean, and one thing, I think we're jumping ahead to like transformative tooling and stuff like that. I think the first thing we did in, in the previous thing I worked on is you need, we should be creating libraries to, to help people create conformant um, events. So for all the different languages, so whatever tooling, whatever language I have on the client or on the server side for that matter, that we, we give them a language that implements the spec that this group contributes and that we host on our GitHub. And then, then the, the issue of creating conformance tools diminishes because they can just grab the libraries that we endorse and we know are conformant to a certain version of the spec. So let's just back up for a sec. I think it was Austin who said this, the scope should sort of dictate what we put into the spec. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's fine-grained enough personally, right? Because that won't necessarily help us to say, oh, someone wants to add a foo property. And it's because it's something that they need in their specific implementation, but no one else sees any value in it whatsoever. How are we gonna decide whether that goes in or not? Right, because if only one person is ever gonna implement that, I'm not so sure we want that to go in. So we need to have some sort of process we're gonna to use to decide whether that's worthy. That's, that's our normal process. They submit a PR for the thing and we evaluate or and we evaluate as a group and we vote on it through our governance model. And if yeah. it doesn't, then, we, then we basically say that that property is not supported and it can be ignored. So. And, and Doug, APIs need to be extensible. So the, the way we suggested, and I think also in Austin spec was suggested that attributes could be added. So the API, if, yeah. if we're building an API that is limited to a set of attributes and we cannot add the attributes yeah. later, we're probably doing something wrong. And that's, that's clear that yeah, you're that's right. to make everyone happy. They're always going to want to carry more data. So you have to have allow for additional fields, tags, annotations to any given event that are domain specific. No, obviously, yes, extensibility needs to be there. I'm just, I'm just ex from experience I've seen in other specs, I've seen them have this bar in there and that's why I wanted to raise the question but whether we want to have that bar there. And the sense I'm getting is, as, at least as of right now, we probably don't want to think about having that bar, and that's fine. Well, actually, I completely agree, which was why I was working on the governance modifications. And, you know, Doug has opened an, open, an issue to specifically talk about 
moving towards a process which would allow for more async normal kind of LGTBMs. So I think this is really under that governance thing. Some people think it's premature to get into that type of governance discussion. So I think we should just, you know, keep talking about it offline and in issues, because I think it's actually super important right now, we are favoring this discussion over async participation. And I think we're seeing the effects of that because everything is a vote of this group that meets in, in live instead of being a result of discussion on PRs. And so, but I, I think everybody wants to move to more async stuff. So I think we're getting there. Yep. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to have, start having a discussion. I think a lot of good input there. Uh, no resolution or no action taken from this at, at this point in time. Um, we are, are almost out of time. And I, so I don't think we have time to jump into a new topic. However, I do want to make sure I get people on the roll call as appropriate. So let me just go through the list of attendees that do not have a star next to them, meaning that I, I confirm they're on. Uh, Jim Curtis, are you there? See you on the chat. Jim? Okay, what about Chris? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, yes, Jim, here. thank you. Okay. Sorry. Yep, and Chris Anachuk? Yeah, I'm here, sorry, I was muted. No, not a problem. And Orit, I don't think I've heard you yet. Are you on the call? Yeah, I'm here. I'm Excellent. Here. Okay. Is there anybody on the call who has not put their name on the attendee list and that, that would like to be uh, noted? All right. Cool. I think I got everybody. All right. I think with that, I think we're out of time. Thank you guys very much. And we'll talk again next week. All right. And thank you, thanks, Sarah, for taking notes. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks, all.